All right, let's dive straight into the video. Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Today, very exciting video, as we are going to be talking about the Pico 4 attached to the PC using the USB-C 3.0 cable. That's right. Now, there are some timestamps in the description below, so do skip to wherever you feel is more relevant to you. I will explain at the end of this video the how to set up guide to getting your Pico 4 connected to your PC using the USB 3.0. If you want to watch more footage using the Air Link, that means the wireless streaming, do go and search for these other videos in the VR Essentials YouTube channel. I will also put a couple links in the description below. All right, so first of all, all the footage that you see on your screen is actually recorded inside of the Pico 4. I do like how Pico make it very easy for us content creators or for you if you're looking to share your content, let's say on social media or to other the people, friends and family, as to the fact that you can record the footage directly from the Pico 4, even if you are using Steam VR and not only the actual streaming or standalone version of the headset itself. The other thing that I would like to point out is about the IPD. So I would just like to make it very clear that you can start your IPD at 58 mm and go all the way up to 72. If you reach 70, 62, excuse me, and you go below, there will be a pop-up notifying you that if you go below, you may have a clipping on your nose. Therefore, you do need to enable the red dot on your pop-up before you can go to 58 mm. In today's video, we're going to be progressively going up in resolution from starting very casual kind of games all the way to sims so there will be something for everybody in today's video however i do need to make this clear that it's not so much a video for those who are hardcore pc vr gamers and it is not really a video for those who are looking to upgrade from pc vr into the actual pico 4 although i do provide you my feedback for those who are also hardcore gamers i do like to say at the end of this video so if if you do want to know whether you should upgrade from your PC VR setup to your Pico to the Pico 4, excuse me, then do hang around and do watch until the end of this video. Or you could skip and go straight away into the descriptions where you can go to the various different timestamps there. So today we're going to look at several different factors. First of all, how easy is it to connect from the PC inside of the Pico 4 going via Steam VR, of course, and also we're going to be looking at the tracking is the tracking good any loss of tracking there how the resolution inside of the actual headset as it is now officially a display headset where everything else is running directly from the computers graphics card now my setup is i would say medium it's an rtx 2070 of course now a lot of people are going for the 3000 series and the 4000 series is out for some of the cards as well in certain countries so it's definitely not super high end we have the i7 9700k and the hero maximus 11 motherboard so good decent medium setup there which i think most people would probably have as it is not so costly compared to the 3000 or the 4000 series of course now if you are going to be using steam vr we do highly recommend that you also make sure you have a cat 7 or higher ethernet cable running from your router to your computer and do not use i would recommend especially any form of wireless adapters or anything like that on your pc if you're going to be streaming Steam VR to your Pico 4, regardless if it's going to be wireless or using the USB-C 3.0 cable i'm also using an anchor 3.0 cable just to let you know and you can use a adapter or let's say a cable to make it longer i personally use the cable creatives cable in order to go with my anchor 3.0 and you know i personally do not have any issues but it is possible that some cables perhaps as it was with the oculus quest one at the time perhaps are not so compatible so do leave a comment below let us know what cables you guys are using for your best most optimum setup using the Pico 4 to your Steam VR. So first of all, I'd like to say that the Pico 4 works a gem with Steam VR when it comes to any kind of very standard and very casual kind of games. For example, when we're using Shooty Skies just now, oh, it's an amazing game. I do recommend everybody to download this if you do like these kind of 
very casual kind of games. A lot of special effects inside, a lot of particles that go around, a lot of fog and all these kind of things, but it doesn't require a lot of RAM to power it, which means that the Pico 4 graphics are absolutely sublime. It really doesn't make a difference when I compare it, let's say, to the HP Reverb G2. Ragnarok, which is also a rhythm game, doesn't really surprisingly have any issues there the graphics are super sweet everything is super sharp there aren't any jagged edges anywhere to be seen the tracking is absolutely sublime and the gameplay is just super smooth i have to say that whilst i was playing ragnarok and also shoot these guys i didn't have any issues in terms of the game stopping or any latency in terms of the actual uh, frame so the frame per seconds was absolutely fine i really did feel i was in 90 hertz and not 72 hertz even though there aren't that much of a difference i would say between 72 and 90 you do still feel it i mean especially if you spend hundreds of hours or thousands of hours in vr then you would definitely definitely see the differences for sure even though they are very minute as i mentioned but for me the gaming was absolutely good no issues whatsoever when it came to those kind of games the sound was no latency either so when i was hitting the actual drums then the actual graphics or the visuals of the drums hitting the drums as well were perfectly aligned no issues whatsoever perfectly happy it felt very very immersive the fog was really good the depth of field was really good it just was absolutely absolutely excuse me sublime and if i was a first time pc vr user then for sure i would be completely happy with the graphics rendered there and the experience in general without a doubt. I think where things get very interesting is when we start to use other kind of experiences which require a different form of power. For example, with Google Earth, everything is rendered from the cloud servers at Google and some of the images are pretty, pretty high res. Now, my experience in terms of going into various different cities and being able to explore all the various different environments inside of Google Earth, I have to admit that with the Pico 4, I had absolutely no issue. And I definitely recommend the Pico 4 if you are somebody who enjoys to go on traveling kind of experiences like Google Earth, because it's quite a light, I would say also app to power. Most of the powers I mentioned I would say it comes from the servers of Google itself. So it's really going to rely on the internet connection more than anything else. However, I have to say that also, whether you're changing the actual time of day, for example, you go to night and day, again, there's no issues there in terms of the graphics. And the Pico 4 really does a great job. And you'll see this later on, as I will show you some footage with Aceto Corsa and also, sorry, Automobilista 2, and also with Half-Life Alex and After the Fall, you'll notice that inside of the dark areas, even on Google Earth, then there's really no issues. There's no kind of artifacting or kind of compression going on there. It really does handle things pretty well, I do have to say. But again, Google Earth is not really, you know, one of those apps that requires tons and tons of RAM or the entirety of your computer in order to power it. But it was just really, really good fun to be able to fly around in all the different environments and also being able to see all the various different trees in the park. The colors are just amazing. And when you go into VR 360 view mode, it's really, really amazing. But again, the VR 360 will depend on the camera that was used in order to take the various different pictures. And it can feel a little bit blurry depending on the actual view mode or location in which you're in because people have used different cameras to take all the various different pictures inside of Google Earth. But all in all, I have to say the Google Earth experience was very good equally to Shooty Skies and also Ragnarok. All right, so for your car fans, this is the part of the video that you'll definitely want to know as I can give you my first impressions as to what it was like to use Automobilista 2 with the Pico 4 USB 3.0 cable. Now I have to I have to mention, excuse me, that I'm also using the Logitech wheel and do head into the description below to know all the gear that I use on this video so that you can find out more information, of course. And I have to say that, okay, there are definitely some differences and I definitely feel that if you are a hardcore gamer, that perhaps the Pico 4 is not going to be for you for car sims. Although I only tried, as I mentioned, Automobilista 2 and not other 
car sims itself. But if you're a casual gamer, let's say, or you're somebody who is its first time inside of VR and you don't really mind so much in terms of the optimum, optimum graphics when it comes to simulations because you want to use your Pico 4 more for the standalone, let's say, of experiences or you want to use other kind of experiences and do hang around, use zombie first person shooter fans as I will also give you my first impressions using the USB 3.0 cable to Steam VR with the Pico 4. But I have to say that where it lacks the Pico 4 is definitely for games like Automobilista 2 where there's definitely a little bit more compression there. You can definitely tell the difference when I, for example, compare it to the HP Reverb G2. Now do make sure to hit the notification bell after you subscribe because of course I will do separate videos comparing the graphics with various different car sims and other games and do leave a comment below let me know which games you most specifically are most curious about in terms of the differences between let's say the HP Reverb G2 and the Pico 4 but I have to say that there was more compression now the graphics were very very decent don't get me wrong but I could definitely tell there were more jagged edges in the grills and also so the shadows, even though most of the graphics themselves were, I would say, high defi definition or ultra high, except for the shadows were, which were set, excuse me, on medium. But again, on, you know, the HP Reverb G2, the shadows don't have so much pixelation inside of them. They're definitely much more smoother when I'm on medium settings as well with the NVIDIA 2070. But with the Pico 4, there's definitely more compression. You can definitely tell it feels less 3D, let's say, the simulation. The depth of field feels more 2D, even though, I was, as I said, it can handle definitely a lot more bloom and also all the fog there. It can definitely handle it without a doubt. Everything is running super smoothly. It's just that I can feel that how can I explain it? It just feels a little bit more fake to me. It feels a little bit more 2D as compared to the HP Reverb G2. It definitely feels more 3D, more hyper-realistic, and definitely less jagged edges, much more smoother in terms of the graphics. But again, if you're a first time PC VR user and you don't mind all these kind of things, you're definitely gonna have a ball of a time with the Pico 4. All right, so now for your first person shooters, let's talk about a couple of apps that are definitely some of the fan favorites with after the fall to start off with and after that we will move on to Half-Life Alex because there are noticeably some differences there which are very very interesting and mm, just very curious but before we do so I would like to answer one of the questions that was asked many many times on the channel about the battery life of the Pico 4 when it is plugged in into the PC and Steam VR. Now my Pico is not charging when I plug in into USB 3.0 and I'm running it onto the PC, even though I am plugging it in from the PC itself directly into the USB-C output or input on the actual headset itself. However, I am able to play for longer because there is a, I guess there is some kind of charging going on there. It's just that the electricity is not powering it enough to constantly keep the electricity at the same level each time. So it is trickling down percent by percent, but much, much slower if I was using it in standalone mode, which means I can use it for, I haven't actually timed it per se, but I can tell you that after two hours, I had only used up about 30 to 35% of battery compared to using it in standalone mode. If it was two hours using the same kind of, let's say games like Sooty Skies or Ragnarok or After the Fall, then after two hours and a half, it would be dead for sure. Maybe probably after two hours and 15 minutes, you know, most undoubtedly as well. So the fact that I can go on longer for probably let's say four to five hours with the PC is already noticeably a good difference there. If of course you do wish to do more VR, although it is not recommended to stay in for that long, I have to admit. Now the great thing about the actual after the full game is that it does render every PC VR facet of the game compared to the standalone mode. For example, when you go near your point that you win after shooting the zombies, they will come flying towards you with all the nice part of core effects there and also the sound effects that go with it. And of course, you can also manipulate the actual zombies after killing them or you could punch them, for example. And this is something that you cannot do inside of 
well, the standalone version mode, as the object of your arm or your gun will go directly through the actual zombies themselves. And, you know, but in PC VR, you can actually, as I mentioned, you know, be able to hit them or do whatever it is that you want. Also, the herds of zombies are definitely more there compared to the standalone mode. And the graphics are absolutely sublime inside of After the Fall. Although it does use quite a lot of RAM, I don't feel like the game is compressed compared to the HP Reverb G2. I feel that it is very much... I don't know, the real version, what can I tell you? There aren't as many jagged edges, it's pretty smooth, although there are some here and there, I do have to admit, compared to, let's say, the standalone version, which in the standalone version handles very well. There are no jagged edges anywhere, but of course, in the PC VR version, you definitely have much more textures and much more details on the textured maps and also the normal maps, definitely more bumps there, so it definitely feels more 3D. I have to say the gameplay is fantastic. The black are super black and everything is crystal sharp so I definitely have a really really good time in After the Fall however compared to Half-Life Alyx hmm all right let's talk about that just now so using Half-Life Alyx is a little bit of a different beast because Half-Life Alyx of course has come out a little bit before well one year or more than that before Half-Life Alyx so it is possible the technologies that they're using to render everything also can be slightly different and more taxing let's say on the actual GPU, although the textures and the graphics inside of Half-Life Alyx are considered to be some of the best in virtual reality today and really has set the standards for every other game. I'm not sure there are many other games that come close to it other than maybe Hubris, which is an amazing demo and a must try if you're a PC VR fan as well. Now, in terms of the gameplay itself, I have to admit that I was using the ultra high fidelity graphic settings on the computer, even as you can see now the recording and I am using other software including OBS as well to power and also the camera itself to actually film myself to be on the camera too, but it was able to handle it completely fine. However, there is definitely some compression in terms of the graphics. It feels more like a medium or low setting, to be honest with you, than a high ultra fidelity setting when using, for example, the HP Reverb G2, simply because, well, the Pico 4 is using a USB 3.0 cable that is not designed to handle these kind of super high end fidelity graphic games. But I was very surprised because on After the Fall, it did such a really amazing, great job. It was very hard to tell the differences between an HP Reverb G2 and the actual Pico 4 itself. And also it did a great job, as I mentioned before, on Google Earth, also on Shooty Skies, and also on Ragnarok. So it seems to me that there is majority of the games will do absolutely just fine using the Pico 4. However, for your Sims, and also for very taxing, demanding kind of games for the GPU, they will definitely Definitely be some compromisings there for sure. However, in terms of the gameplay inside of Half-Life Alyx, there were no issues in terms of latency or in terms of grabbing certain objects, which I did have, for example, using the wireless streaming. And do go and check out that video after this video to see where I had issues at 90 hertz when streaming completely wirelessly to the actual Steam VR itself. Now, I would also like to talk about the super sampling in terms of Steam VR. Now, when I go back to the home in Steam VR, I actually had to crank down the super sampling from 100% to about 80% so that I didn't have any issues. However, in all the games that you see me playing today, I had no issues whatsoever at 100% inside of Steam VR, which means that I'm using the resolution natively to the Pico 4 itself, which is 4K per eye at 2160 by 2160 in terms of resolution. Now, even though there are some compression issues inside of some Sims and also inside of Half-Life Alyx, I have to make, I have to communicate to you that in the blacks, there's no artifacting going on inside. The compression, I would say, is more to do with the fact that there is slightly more jagged edges here and there, and also the shadows are a little bit more pixelated. And you can just tell in some of the areas that it is just 
just a little bit more compressed in terms of the graphics. It doesn't feel as 3D as compared to the HP Reverb G2 in terms of the depth of field maps, for example, as to what you see far away and what you see close to you, for example. But in terms of the blacks, there's no like pixelating or pixels trying to render themselves. No, all that is completely clear. And if you're definitely not a hardcore PC VR gamer, you're definitely not really going to notice all these kind of things. And you're going to be really having an amazing time with Steam VR, especially as I mentioned before, for first time PC VR gamers. And of course, your graphics card, if you're using a 3000 series or a 4000 series, you're definitely going to have a much better experience compared to me when I'm using my RTX 2070, absolutely for sure. So before I show you the how to set up guide of the virtual assistant, just want to give you my final thoughts that if you are a hardcore PC VR gamer, then perhaps the Pico 4 is not going to be for you if you want to run specifically sims or also very high fidelity realistic or hyper realistic graphics like half-life alex that require a lot of gpu ram in order to power it however if you're a very casual kind of pc vr gamer you don't really care so much about all these kind of different things then definitely i mean you can upgrade since you will have the pancake lens resolution and also all the various different games inside of the actual Pico and as I mentioned for PC VR I would say that 70 or 80 percent of all the games or even 90 percent will be just fine it's just those 10 percent of hyper realistic sims and all those kind of different things all right let me show you how to do the actual setup guide now of the actual virtual assistant. It's actually really simple. All you have to do is go to the actual PicoXR.com website, search for at the top on the right hand side where it says Pico link, then just scroll down a little bit, make sure that you choose Pico 4 and then just download directly onto your computer. The download will not last that very long to be honest with you. And then, you know, just do the install after it's actually been downloaded. Now, all you have to do is just start it off. Make sure your Pico 4 is also, of course, turned on. Make sure that on the little arrow, there's no little dot there, which basically means you would have to download an update. If you don't see any dots anywhere, then it means that you have the latest version. For me, it's a version 9.1, I think. And then go to the options, which is the little wheel icon there. Now, I'm personally running for the USB 3.0 at 90 hertz on HD for today's video. So then you just close everything up, then just click connect, whether you want USB 3.0 or, of course, while streaming. You can also choose, of course, for the app to decide whether you want it to be the same settings in the future the next time that you power it on. And then once you start to connect, go inside of the headset, you will see that basically inside it will show you where to click and the actual desktop number and name also to connect to. And then it will automatically, or perhaps for the very first time, you may have to switch SteamVR on manually. Although for me, it did it completely automatically. I did not have to turn on SteamVR manually itself. And then once SteamVR powers on, you'll see that inside of the headset, it will go from gray or black or a little eye continues connecting all the way into the actual Steam VR lounge, I would call it, or tunnel, where you can see whatever desktop, you know, uh, picture there it is. And then just click with your left hand side controller on the actual camera button. Just click and hold there. And then you'll see that all your various different Steam VR games will appear on a pop up and then just simply, you know, Choose the one you want to load and then you're done. All right, guys, I know it's a long video. Thank you so much for spending some time together. I hope it was useful Do smash the likes if it was so more people get to see today's video and leave your comments below. Let me know what kind of experiences you've had with your Pico 4 using the USB 3.0 cable or what experiences are you most excited about to try when your Pico 4 arrives at your doorstep. All right, until next time, guys. Have a lovely evening. I will see you in this video or the video there. And yeah, take it easy. Bye for now. Thanks again. Bye.